Okay, so we're gonna assess the talocural joint. Uh, there's an old injury to this joint. And so the systematic way that we're going to look at this is at least start with functional weight bearing. So we're gonna do a squat and look to see if there's adequate dorsiflexion or not and go ahead and lean to this way. Good, and lean the other way. And you notice when she comes this way, there's a little bit of a block. Come back up and you feel that as well. In weight-bearing twisting, so go ahead and cross and twist towards me, you notice that this foot flattens, this doesn't move. Now let's go the other way. She has an arch here and this flattens, but this, she doesn't have a dynamic arch here as well. In gait, so go ahead and step forward with that foot there. This is going to affect push off of gait. Lack of dorsiflexion is going to make her not stay on stance and then have to bring this leg forward. So she's not storing any energy to advance the leg. So she's going to have to muscle the leg forward with QL and psoas. As I've mentioned before, lack of dorsiflexion has been shown in clinical practice guidelines to contribute to plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendinopathy. It's part of that cluster. So we want to assess the glide, and if the glide is restricted, proceed to do a manipulation, and then come back to a mobilization with movement to help with push off and gait, looking and addressing this joint. So we're going to look at the Taller Swing next. So as we're doing the Taller Swing, what we want to do is that four-point grip on the neck of the talus. And what we're looking for is that neck of the talus to externally rotate. So as she dorsiflexes, we want to see if there's an external rotation. You check the contralateral side, and you can feel as you keep the foot parallel to the floor, she goes into dorsiflexion. And if my hands are in the right position, I can feel that neck of the talus turn. On this side, you get a four-point grip, keep the foot parallel, and you look and you see it just, just stops. And I can even do some distraction and it stops. Okay, well the restriction of motion could be muscle, muscle, muscular or it can be um, a joint. So I'm gonna bring in some muscle to see if I can get a little bit more glide out of it. So go ahead and dorsiflex up into me and relax, and then I do that glide. And I get a little bit more motion, but it's still, it almost just gets me closer to the barrier. And we'll go up again, and relax. And she's still pretty tight there. So she's going to be a good candidate for manipulation, so we're going to go ahead and try the manipulation. So go ahead and lay on your back. When you go to do the tallow curl manipulation, sometimes I like this foot bent up here. It just puts the back in a nice position. She's on the more mobile side of things, so I want to be conscious of the knee when I do this. So I want to either have somebody come and hold this down, or when I do my force, just contain it. I'm going to do just a few glides to check out the mobility. She has a little bit of mobility there, just to make sure you do some of your stress tests. The manipulation itself, we get to the barrier. I like to take up a little slack, so instead of just putting my hands on there, I start a little superior, and then I take up a little of that soft tissue slack so my fingers are close to that neck of the talus. And you bring your elbows in close. and you lean back. Does that feel okay? I'm gonna do a quick push, is that okay? Okay, now I want you to push up into my hands a little bit and relax. Just doing that to see if I can get a little bit closer to the barrier. So I'll get her into this position and I'll hold it and then I'll do a quick pull, like that. And that was an interesting feeling because you felt it just kind of go, I don't know if you felt the, it, it, had, it made an internal noise that wasn't external, it just was like, oh, okay. 
Yeah, I think I may go. Sometimes when that happens, I find that that neck of the talus is actually inverted a little bit. So from my mentor, Gail, what you can do is get on the neck of the talus and do a manipulation in order to externally rotate that neck of the talus. For some of those ankles where either you don't get an audible or it just has a weird kind of feel to it, you can either do this manipulation or do the standing mobilization with movement. When you do this one, you wanna make sure you're not blocking the talus, so I'm up above the tibia and fibula. And I get up close and this is just a flick like that. So I have her in this position, I bring her up, and I flick it down. That will give that external rotation, so it's a, like that. Once we get there, we can reassess dorsiflexion, or you can come back and do, try another tallow curl manipulation when you're in this position. Here. There. And we got a little bit better audible there. So now that we had a couple successful audibles and mo motion of that joint, I'm gonna have you go ahead and sit up. And we'll do a little bit of the Taller Glide. So go ahead and push up into me and relax. And that feels different. So now you can see my thumb is actually <laughs> disappearing a little bit because it's now riding the wave of the neck of the talus that feels like it can externally rotate now. Go ahead and push up into me again and relax. Good. So then we're only as good as if we can retrain or push off. So go ahead and stand on up. And this, uh, let me see. Yeah, so you're gonna face me and get into push off. Good, and then bring your foot down. So this, I'm gonna have you bring your foot back a little bit. So this is neuromuscular re-education for push off. I make sure the patient takes a step slightly shorter than their normal step. And I'll tell them, your home program is going for you to rock back and forth uh, where you go to a push off of walking. So go ahead and lift your heel up. This is how you walk. So the cadence I would like you to do with this exercise is the same cadence as you're walking. And what I'd like you to do, if you listen to music, every time the song changes, think of this exercise for the first few beats of the song. But don't obsess about it because then you'll end up walking unnaturally. But remember this, we need to change this. This is going to be a more efficient habit for you. Once you establish that, you do a little bit of your mobilization with movement. Now this one, I just need you to hold for a little bit so we can get some more of that motion good and then come back. This hand, the web space in my hand is on that neck of the talus. My other hand is pulling on the tibia and fibular complex forward and hold. And come back. Hold. And come back. And we would do about 10 of those. We obviously would have analyzed the gait before and after. And then we go back to our functional movement assessment. So go ahead and face forward. And we'll just have you do a squat. Yeah, and then squat and lean. Now you can actually lean over there. So that's nice. So now she has the mobility. Now we just have to get her better with however she's absorbing that new mobility so that the muscles remember to click in like they should. So that is from functional assessment to treatment back to functional assessment for the telecurl joint. Any questions? What was nice about those two examples is we had one example of someone, it's definitely a lot more neuromuscular with you. 
where the joints jam some, but your gastroc tone is really high and your body type's different than your body type. So they both will have the same strategy, but you have to think about different things up the chain. I was more worried about her ankle primarily because that was the biggest restriction along the lower kinetic chain. And so that would impact her because she is higher on the Baton scale. So she's going to borrow range from joints and eventually, I mean, how old are you? 25. Yeah, so I mean, she's got another decade before she's going to start really breaking down. So, but, but there's going to be, with people who are more immobile, you're going to borrow that range and your body's going to absorb it and be happy with it until once you start getting older, you start losing water content and flexibility even in people who are more hypermobile. And at the end of the day, you're going to start having breakdown. And your brain won't know what to do with it because it's been happily borrowing range for years. So I get concerned with a major restriction in somebody who's flexible because I know 10 years from now, 15 years from now, you're going to end up in a physical therapy office with breakdown. It's going to be harder to change. For you, you're stiff everywhere. So you, uh, any mobility we do with you, your body says, thank you. <laughs> I, I can use that now because I couldn't before. So we go to the hip, we'll go to the ankle. You try to get range wherever you can, but then you end up with the same focus on push off of gait because it, we have to look at stride length, stride width, and what your mobility is, where you're bor borrowing range in a frontal plane and in a transverse plane in order to make sure that, that we make you efficient. Both end up with gait, but the reasoning is a little bit different.